in a European Union without border controls and frontiers, where everybody is free to move everywhere uh, within the Europe, um, trafficking in human beings is also a cross-border issue that requires a fair amount of coordination from all authorities from all the countries. I believe that especially in this case, we need a strategic approach in order to be able to fight this problem correctly and, let's say, efficiently. Almost 80% of the human trafficking going on in the United States is happening in the state of California. That's where most of the incidents are. All of us have a responsibility to recognize that when we get something at a lower price and, uh, and uh, we get a discount, uh, and we're all, all of us are always looking for the cheapest, that uh, sometimes it is at the expense of the dignity of some other human being. Uh, and uh, so we have to be willing to uh, be prepared to make sacrifices, all of us, to protect uh, and defend uh, the dignity of humanity. A nation without integrity is a danger to humanity. And so it is our hope that uh, uh, the leadership that comes out of this European Parliament will uh, motivate uh, and inspire other nations to do everything in their power to protect, to protect the dignity of every human being so that human trafficking will be a thing of the past. The Balkans are becoming a transit way for illegal movement of people looking for better life in the West. For Bulgaria in, par in particular, this matter is directly connected to the forthcoming joining to the Schengen, uh, Schengen Agreement. According to the European Commission, about 80% of the victims of trafficking are women, and about 50% of them are minors and need protection. The real support of the victims of trafficking, their social adaptation and psychological help is left to the NGO sector. I think that it was very important that we had that kind of uh, seminar. The human uh, trafficking is a huge problem in Europe and in the world. It's a, you know, you can say that uh, in the old days there were slavery and the human trafficking is uh, this day slavery. And you know, it seems to me that uh, people in Europe, they are a little bit embarrassing that we have that kind of problem now and they avoid to discuss for that item. But we have to raise that item, we have to talk about it, that because we, we, if we really would like to promote uh, human rights, so, and uh, as it's the core value for us as liberals, so we have to tackle the human trafficking in Europe and we have to give the opportunities for everyone to live in the good, beautiful life. We have what is, you've already been describing, by five to ten years ago, we would often have cases of trafficking where, where those who, who became victims were, were, well, were irritated and were, were given false information about what would be awaiting them exactly, what kind of job. We now more and more see that the recruitment really happens with, you're going to work as a dancer in a, in a striptease bar, you're going to work in prostitution, but with very unclear information about what that really entails, what the working conditions are. But that, of course, the fact that, that often the victims we find nowadays are being told what kind of work would be expected of them makes it much more difficult for them to say afterwards, it's, I've been duped, I've been really b betrayed here. We have to, to be aware that it is one of the major problems in the, our modern society that is still more, um, uh, slavery, nowadays slavery of human beings, trafficking, uh, exploiting uh, their, co their bodies and their organs. I think it, it is unacceptable. And we as a European Parliament, especially within our subcommittee on human rights, we are very much involved in this problem and we continuously uh, following uh, this issue and we, we have to work closely much and more with the civil society who is on the ground 
working with the people, victims on this trafficking. Shame arises when we are observed and judged. In other words, valued and found not to be enough, found wanting. Not to speak of those forced into circumstances where the daily experience deepens the sense of disvalue, shame and powerlessness. Shame brought on by the actions or non-actions of others. And all this prevents us from seeing our true condition, the beauty and dignity on the other hand, and the fragility and finitude of each individual human life. Many have accepted their present condition and learned to live a shame-filled life. And I believe shame is natural human condition. Many have given up the beauty and dignity of human life and submitted to a life or forced to a life of quiet desperation. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. lost but now I'm found was blind but now I see and may the victims human trafficking all over the world find their point of grace, their point of return, their point of healing, their point of wholeness, even if it is only through the words and melody of a song.